Hello and welcome back super mums. In today's video we're going to be delving deep into some top tips to make the gift and card giving process at Christmas a whole lot easier. <music> moment it's 2018 and there's a lot of stuff going on in the, the press and social media online about what a wasteful society we are and I feel like it's particularly poignant at Christmas time because you really start to feel like you should be buying more you should be spending more and you have to have all these things and these big piles of presents and it's just Oh, it's just not so. They say the best things in life are free. Well, me, the best things in life are thoughtful when it comes to present and card giving. So let's start with that pesky card list that seems to grow and grow every year. Think about it. When you get all these cards, yes, it's nice for a second, but often they're cluttering up sideboards or tables and get pinned up everywhere and you run out of the pegs. And actually, do you appreciate them that much more than if someone sent you a nice personal message or picked up the phone and yes we don't have time to phone all these people and it's meant to be like the card list is so we don't have to do that but if they're not important enough to pick up the phone and have a conversation with I just wouldn't be bothering sending them a Christmas card that is me personally, and as I always say, this is about being the mum that you want to be, and you have to kind of really dig deep and find out whether that matters to you. And is that person that is getting this card that you've put effort into writing, and sticking a stamp on, is this really gonna make a difference to their day and decide whether it's worth sending? So get brutal. My first tip is get brutal with that card list. One of the things I do like about Christmas cards is a little tradition we started last year. Yes, traditions can just be started if they're important to you. And we decided that every year at the end of November, we were gonna go and see Father Christmas as a family and use the picture from that visit as our Christmas card. This means that people are getting to see what we look like still. And it's an actual nice connection. It's a nice keepsake. I would much rather get a Christmas card with the person's face on it, even if it's from their summer holiday, than just some generic anything card. And actually, it's quite cheap now to get your cards printed up. I'm gonna link my preferred printer down below, which is printed.com. Really, really quick, get loads of packs of cards made up. Order your thank you cards while you're there as well. Done, sorted, brilliant. Another top tip for Christmas cards is to keep a running address label document. So I have in Word a template, I've got sheets of the printed out labels, I have the template saved in Word and all the addresses are on there and if I make a strong connection with a person in a year then I'll add their address to that. I guess it's my, my version of a Christmas card list. And I print off the sheets and then I know that those are all the people I'm doing Christmas cards for. And then what I actually do is print a second copy at the beginning of January, and then that's my birthday card list as well. So if by the end of the year there's a sticker still on that sheet and they didn't get a birthday card, probably can't, shouldn't really be on the list for Christmas. Hi, I'm Tamsin, mum of two small boys, age seven and three. My favorite gift every year is what my mum gives me, and that's pants, nice pants. They make me feel good and they're not boring and they're the best Christmas present I get every year. Okay, so gifts. Gift giving at Christmas can be absolutely insane. And actually a little bit of thought goes a long, long way. One Hello, my name's Heather and I have a gorgeous little boy. The best present he ever got me was a very sentimental one. It's this mug. It says how much he loves me on it and it's got a picture of him and he's actually wearing roller skates. Now I teach roller skating so this is particularly special to me. Every time I have my morning coffee I get to see his gorgeous face and it's just really really special. One of my favourite gifts from last year was a gift of food to a mother in need for her baby. So this obviously didn't come directly to me. It was just a little piece of paper, like a print off, that said, um, in you and Felicity's name, it's my daughter, 
um, some money was donated that's going to help a mother feed her child. And I sobbed like a baby. <laughs> It, it was the perfect gift for me because we'd had this baby and of course with them comes all this plastic tat and all these other um, things that you have to have and we just we didn't want any more stuff we didn't need anything and that for me was really really thoughtful and I just sent the most lovely message to the person that bought it and said oh just like I don't know if he quite got actually how like touched I was and how that was such a perfect fit and for me that's one of my favorite go-to's if it's someone I really want to get a gift for but I have no idea then I do a charity donation in their name and I try and find something that connects with them but sometimes you can't do that so if there's someone you feel like you've got to or you want to get a present for and you've got no idea let's not be filling up landfill please and and make a difference and and use your use your gift capabilities wisely Hi guys, my name is Michelle. I'm a mum of two. I have a 16 year old son and a 14 year old daughter. My favourite Christmas present of all times, I can't lie, had to be the fact that my daughter bought me a small UGG keyring. Let me rephrase it actually. I had bought it for her like a year before she wanted it. We went out and it was gold. She knows I love everything gold. And then one day she just, I was like, oh, I really want to buy some UGG boots. She wrapped it up for me and she basically just gave it to me for Christmas. So. The gift of time is also an amazing one. So give them make up a, like a little voucher and said, I'm going to take you for a cup of tea or I'm going to babysit for your kids if you're slightly psychotic and want to do that. Um, we're going to go and watch a movie together. Like that kind of thing, particularly if it's like another busy mum or a friend you don't get to see very often, it's going to mean so much more than buying them a candle that then costs you more in postage than the actual item did and things like that. So gift of time is always a winner. When it comes to the actual gift list, I like to keep this in my phone. So I keep a list of names and then if I get an idea, I can stick it by it. And that list goes in in September usually, if not before. And as soon as I get ideas, I can kind of pop them down next to the name. As soon as they're bought, I can kind of tick them off as well. Once I've bought all the gifts, I do then write these down and keep them for the next year. So I can go back and see that person, I've seen them use that or they really commented a lot on that. And so I know what sort of thread of present to look at this year as well. So I've created with Supermum Society a PDF printable that can be your Christmas planner companion. You can plan your dream Christmas out and in there, it's got a section to write down all your gifts, the gift lists and things like that. So that can go in there. But while you're still in the ideas and buying process, I would do it on your phone because it's always with you and it's so easy to edit. And it's like, once it's done, then write it into the Christmas planner and keep that for next year because it'll make next year so much easier. Hello, I'm Annie. I'm a mother of two. Uh, my favorite Christmas gift is, um, something my husband now gets me most years, which is a box of thank you notelets. They are normally beautiful, they're normally embossed. Um, I don't think they're terribly expensive, but it does make writing my thank you notes after Christmas a great pleasure. And um, it means I don't have to worry about going to I personally don't want to be known as one of the generations that destroyed the planet. I'm not like a massive eco warrior, but I am noticing a dramatic shift in my mentality when it comes to stuff, not just from a clutter perspective, because we all know I hate clutter, but from a, do I really need this? Has it got lots of plastic wrapping? Those kind of things. Am I buying more, more woods and metals? Um, and, and things that are sustainable and haven't had to travel a long way. So I would also try and encourage you from a personal bit of my heart to shop local, shop independent, look at the like the mass producedness of the item because those items are more likely to have traveled a longer way to get to you. Can you save mileage by when you order the item, getting it shipped directly to the person? Now you might just pay a couple of pounds to have it wrapped at that end, which, can save you a job but maybe cost a little bit more but it's not going to then get to you and you're then going to need to drive it to the person or post it to the person which is more travel cost and adds to the environmental impact of that gift and it's going to save you time because it's already been done for you 
I always like to look at a gift and think, is this going to spark joy? Because I don't want anything in my house and in my life that doesn't spark joy. So is this going to spark joy? Is it going to serve a purpose? If I've really hit the mark wrong, can they gift this on to someone else? <laughs> and or just use it up like soap. <laughs> soap is quite a safe one because they can just use it up. Put it in the guest bathroom or the understairs toilet and it would just get used up. So things that can be used up that aren't gonna have a massive environmental impact or a charity donation are kind of your safest bets. So let's talk wrapping. Wrapping is very time consuming. It can become very costly and you can spend an awful lot of time trying to find really nice paper that's wide enough, that's thick enough, that's gonna make your beautifully thought out present look classy and elegant and wonderful. I also have very traditional Christmas decorations. So when I've got all the presents under the tree, I want it to look nice. Like everything else looks nice. Why is under the tree gonna suddenly be chaos? I want that to look nice too. So depending on what how you want your presents to look under your tree, what you want to feel when you give them to people, will depend on how much effort you personally want to put into your wrapping. And I haven't disliked a gift someone's given me because it's wrapped badly, but I personally really like giving a very nice professionally looking wrapped gift. So I'm gonna share with you some of my secret insider tips as to why I get quite a lot of compliments when it comes to my wrapping at Christmas. So for me, it starts with a good base layer, and that is your paper. Hmm. Surprising. Brown paper. Now this is actually quite a short roll. This is the last of my brown paper. Um, I buy it in bulk, and I normally buy the longer rolls than you do the bigger ones, but I obviously acquired this one at some point. Um, it's better quality. It's thicker, like I said, you can get the longer lengths and they're much longer rolls. And you'll normally get like five meters on a roll if you buy normal wrapping paper and you get so much more on these. And um, they quite often don't even have like a cardboard center as well, so you're not wasting cardboard there. Um, but if you team this up with really good ribbon, which I'll get onto in a moment, it looks so classy and so elegant. And this is often so much cheaper than the other wrapping paper. This is recyclable. A lot of the other wrapping paper is not, which gets like very wasteful. And it doesn't damage as much. So while it's being like hauled from house to house when you're dropping presents off, or it's got to go through the post, or it's been like under the tree and the toddler keeps pulling out and things, this will last better. On well, my other one, not gonna last quite so well, but if you're really bad at wrapping, tissue paper, a couple of layers of tissue paper. Um, my Christmas tissue paper is actually still on order, so I've got a yellow one. I keep four rolls of co different colour tissue paper throughout the year, and then you can either use it if you're stuffing presents in bags. So if you've got a really awkward thing, just shove some tissue paper in and put it in a bag and put some more tissue paper over the top. Looks beautiful, very little effort required. Um, and you can actually bulk buy tissue paper now online so easily. So don't get like the four sheets in a packet ones. Get these like massive rolls. This is like right at the end of it. It was like a big wadge of things. Buy massive rolls of plain colours that you can then use continuously. So like, you could get red and green and use them all year round. Uh, I like my four summer colours and then I'll get some red and green just for the Christmas ones. But a roll, the four coloured rolls will last me through the year, so the two Christmas ones will last me a couple of Christmases. But really, really handy, and also if you need a bit of extra padding around, if it's something a bit more fragile, then you've got all this amazing tissue paper. I do like to have a couple of special presents in nice printed wrapping paper. And also sometimes if you've got too many bows it just gets a bit chaotic so there will be a couple of presents that I won't do a bow on and I will go for some for some special paper but what I have struggled with even if you go into like nicer shops the quality of the paper is pretty shocking I also personally I'm a Christian and I'm surprised at how little mention of Jesus <laughs> there is on lots of Christmas stuff so very excited with my new find for this year. So this is wrapping paper from the Happy Wrappy Co. 
what's not to love about a company with that name? The Happy Rappy Co. And they are papers, but they're, they're faith-based. Um, you're not going to offend someone if you give them faith-based paper at Christmas and they're not a Christian. But if you're a Christian, or you just want really nice paper, to be honest, I just think this stuff is beautiful. Um, it's got nice messages on. It's not completely garish and hideous. And don't get me wrong, if you like garish and hideous Christmas paper, that's totally fine. But I was just so excited when I found this stuff that I kind of had to share it. And I was like, oh, I'm totally about to film a video about Christmas cards and Christmas presents and wrapping paper. And now I've found like this amazing wrapping paper. Um, so obviously this, these are folded up sheets. They're, they're much bigger than this. Uh, but these ones say joy to the world and then peace on earth. Like, who doesn't want peace on earth? Whether you're a Christian or not, who doesn't want peace on earth? And hark the herald angels sing of the three that I've chosen. Um, but they're just really beautiful good quality paper so i'm going to link her down below they're like a small independent company and i'm just a lover of like small independent companies um i've also actually ordered some of the non-christmas ones um that are just remember you are loved tiny but mighty and what's the one on that one every good and perfect gift comes from above i feel like we use that on her christening invites like i just i'm, I'm obsessed i'm obsessed um I love small independent businesses with like personal messages and particularly brands run by mums. So if you don't know where to get your paper from, I'll link her down below and buy and support her because I think she's fabulous. This is not an advert. I just generally love her stuff. So as I said, when you're using the, the nicer paper, I don't tend to do ribbons, but you can. Uh, but with the, the brown paper and the tissue paper, I will do ribbons as well. So I just get some plain in Christmas colours uh satin you can get like double-sided satin ribbon uh, you can get really wide stuff and do these big bows and things and what's really nice is that ribbon is so much more likely to be reused than like the plasticky stuff that just ends up in the bin you can reuse them the kids will have fun playing with them They'll, like braid them in dolly's hair um it's much easier to reuse you can then reuse them on presents next year uh I do this with birthday presents as well. So I've got all these ribbons left over from the kid's birthday that will go back on her presents next year because let's face it, she was one and she'll be two. She's not gonna know. And they'll still look, because it's fabric, they'll still look really pretty and really smart. Um, but there's other things that I've used those bits of ribbon for throughout the years as well. So simple fabric ribbon, not as expensive as you expect, particularly if you buy it on big rolls. The other one I also like is twine. Uh, anyone that's seen The Sound of Music, if you haven't, where have you been? Uh, brown paper packages tied up with string. These are a few of my favorite things. Um, these ones I got from the works and you can get like these all natural, all dyed ones. I even just like the normal twine, the lovely twine ones, just plain like parcel twine. You can get in massive balls from the post office. I think that looks really nice and effective as well. You might disagree. I personally think that does. And I'm even going brown on the labels. Like you can also get, um, I did have for ages a load of just red paper labels as well. And they looked really nice. This is, I think I've got two brown ones left. So I might order some, some red ones this year again. And really simple. You get loads of space because quite often the, the ones that you buy as labels are too small for you to write anything on. Loads of space, nice and easy. If you want to make it a bit interesting, you can get like different Christmas stickers or different stick-ons. These are little felt stick-ons that were, again, a pound for 10 um, from the works because the works is just one of my meccas at the moment. Um, and I could stick those, I'll stick them on a couple of them just to make them a bit more special if it's a really special Prezi or something. Um, or just I fancy it then they'll go on there and um, to make them a little bit special and then I also get these when I make my crackers and then what is Christmas card and gift giving without some silver and gold pens is it just me or do I like these I completely associate with Christmas so I don't get a new set every year my last set lasted me like five or six years this is my new tree this year because they are dried up and gone the old ones but writing your tags with something gold or silver metallic instead of just a normal biro 
makes such a difference. It's really weird, but makes such a difference. And is a lovely addition and a beautiful touch to making your gifts look extra special. So I hope you found this helpful and inspiring and you're ready to go get it when it comes to your Christmas gifts and your Christmas cards. Try not to be wasteful, only buy for those that really matter because in the end, why are you giving it if it doesn't matter? Make it personal, make it thoughtful, plan it in advance so you're not panic buying at the end and make sure that you're not going to miss those postal deadlines either. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood and remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.